All right, so as every single coder programmer knows, the print function is one of the hardest ones to learn, to master. It has a very high, you know, skill ceiling. It has a very high skill floor as well. It's just all around a very difficult thing to understand. Now, if you're a beginner developer and, you know, you don't know what the print function is, which obviously you shouldn't because that's reserved for, like, the experts, right? If you have ever made a script inside of something like Roblox Studio, you can see it actually begins with a print statement. And the reason it does that is to motivate beginners and to show them what's actually possible once they reach expert level, right? Because no beginner can actually really do this, you know, obviously. Now, if I happen to actually run this code, it says hello world, right? So I know this might seem very confusing right now, but just 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 try to see the pattern here, right? It's going to be really it's really hard for me to explain what's going on here, but like I hope that you can kind of see kind of uh, start getting a grasp of like what this code is actually doing. But what if you already are an amazing expert? What if you're already someone saying, "Oh, Byteblocks, this is so easy. You know, I have a thousand hours in, you know, some programming language and I totally understand this. Well, this video is exactly for you. If you're an amazing expert who believes that the print function is actually very easy, I guarantee that there are things which you don't actually know about the print function, specifically uh, how the print function works inside of Roblox Studio. Because, and I'll just switch to using expert programming language here, so any beginners, you can leave the video right now. A print function obviously prints something. If I say hello world, it prints hello world. If I say, you know, one, two, three, it's gonna print one, two, three or whatever. That's all fine, that makes sense, right? Now, there are some very well-known features of prints, like for example, you can print like a math equation, right? And it's gonna, you know, calculate it for you. Or you can also combine strings, right? So let's say if I have a local var is equal to hello, right? I could say var, and then I could do this. I could say var two dots world, right? So it's going to print the variable hello plus this string world. So it's going to be hello world. But that is fairly obvious, right? Now, another lesser well-known fact about prints is that you can actually place somewhat of an if statement inside of them. Not quite, but you can basically put a comparison in a print statement and then it will return true or false whether both items equal one another so let me show you if i print one is equal to two right it's gonna print false because one is not equals to two or if i do something like um let me ask it if the workspace spawn location is the same thing as the workspace base plate right and obviously this is false but then if i ask it if the base plate is equal to the base plate that's obviously going to be true. And that's about all that most people really need for debugging, right? As long as you know how to combine stuff and to compare stuff with a print statement, that effectively concludes everything that you can do with one, right? But what if I told you that there are certain features about print statements that even maybe some long-term coders don't really know about, that you might just find interesting? So let me give you a quick example, right? What happens if I print a table? And just for fun, let me just put some stuff in this table, right? So I'll put one, two, three, I'll, I'll put hello, and I'll also put false. Just for example, if I were to print this table, we would get the actual table. We would get one, two, three, we would get hello, and we would get false. Or what happens if I just give it an empty table, just a regular empty table with zero values? Well, it's going to print the table, right? So this logically for us makes sense, right? I see a table and it's printing a table. That That's very obvious. However, something that you should understand is that a table, the way that the game looks at it, isn't actually a table. It makes it look like this just so it makes sense for us, right? But let's just let's just let me just do an example, right? What is the base plate? If I right now print workspace.base plate, it's just gonna print the name of the item. But how does the game refer to the base plate, right? We know for a fact that it doesn't refer to it by the name because you can have two of the same item named the same thing. How does the game distinguish between each item? How, what is the unique identifier of each item? Or in other words, what is the unique identifier for each item in Roblox? Well, that would be a piece of text. What is going on here is that what print statements do is that they're able to print effectively anything. And when I say this, I don't mean that they can print a, a piece of text. So I can make it print hello and it's going to print hello, right? Or I can make it print something like one, two, three, and it's going to print one, two, three. However, some people have asked the question of like, is this one, two, three 
a text or a number. Like inside of the script, right? I'm printing one, two, three as a number. But the thing that it prints, is this a number or is it a piece of text? And likewise, whenever I print a table, is it printing the actual table? Or is the actual table a piece of text that Roblox simply converts to a table? And if so, how could we print that table as a piece of text? Now, you might be wondering after all of this, like, what do you exactly mean, right? I mean, it, it it's just a table, right? A table can't be string. Like, obviously, if I print a table, it's going to print it as it looks, which is, you know, curly brackets and some sort of item inside of them. But then what if I try and turn this table into a piece of text? What would happen, right? Because right now it just seems like, oh, yeah, it's just converting it into text and, you know, writing it inside of the print statement. But that's not entirely true. And this can be confirmed by using the toString function. And what this does is that anything inside of this function gets turned into a string. So then if I place this table inside of the toString function, it's going to turn the table into a string. And then it's going to print out that string. So what is going to happen? And as you can see, it's printing table and then this series of numbers and letters this is what's called as a memory address some people call it you know different things you might you might see people refer to this as a unique identifier they're kind of basically the same this basically acts like a number for this specific table and this memory address exists uh, to help roblox actually store your table as a value because whenever you make a table inside of a script roblox has to turn it into its own object right it's sim very similar to how these are objects right like very similar to how i can add something like a part inside of the workspace now roblox will never show this and i believe the method is a bit different but a table is effectively its own object with its own memory address and then we get to another really interesting idea what happens if i were to print a function the way you make a function in roblox is very simple you just say function like so and then end and that is literally it that's how you make a function so then what happens if I were to try and create a function inside of a print statement? And if I play the game right now, as you can see, it's doing the same thing. It's giving us the function's unique memory address because a function is also, like I said before with tables, its own kind of object within the script, right? Now, another thing that is interesting is that if I actually try to make this function do something, so just for example, let's say I want this function to print one right what would happen well if i play the game it's still just giving us the memory identifier and that's it but then what if i make it return something right because whenever a function returns something it effectively becomes equal to whatever it returns so if i wanted to return one two three then what's going to happen is that it's still going to print the memory address of the function so what exactly are we doing wrong here and the answer is that we're actually not doing anything wrong at all. This is how it's supposed to go. What we're trying to print isn't what the function is trying to do, right? We're just trying to print the function as an object the way that the game sees it. And what the game sees is this string of letters and numbers. What we would actually have to do is we'd have to run this function. So if I were to bracket the function, right? So I just put two brackets around the function. And then I were to run the function by putting another series of brackets. What it's going to do is it's going to take this function and it's gonna run it. And in that case, if I now play the game, as you can see what happens is that the function gets ran. So it prints one, right? But then when you try and print the function while it's being ran, it prints what the function returns, which in this case is nothing. So then for example, like I said, if I were to do something like return one, two, three, it's gonna print what the function returns, which is one, two, three. So this is something that's very, very interesting, right? Like if I print the function by itself without running it, no matter what's inside of the function, it's always gonna give us the memory address of the function. But then now if I suddenly try and run this function inside of a print statement, then the function is able to run no problem and it's able to then become whatever value it returns, which I think is really interesting. Now, if you've reached this point of the video, you might also be wondering, well, what other things does this work on? For example, what happens if I use to string on a function, right? Like what happens if we do this way? And what happens is that it still prints the identifier, right? Because the identifier is already a string. So nothing really gets changed. But then what if I do to string uh, workspace base plate, right? What happens if I do that? Well, it's still a base plate because 
it still returns the name of what it is, right? And the name is a string, so nothing actually gets changed. Tables and functions aren't necessarily the only things that you can, you know, print and get a memory value out of, but they are very easy to understand for a lot of people. And I do believe that something like a function is very interesting when you kind of like showcase like how different it is when you print the function versus how different it is when you print a running function. And here is the last, but in my opinion, one of the more interesting uh, things that you can actually do, not necessarily with the print function, but just with Roblox's code in general. And pardon me if this is like unbelievably common knowledge but just for example right let's say i have a function and let's say that function creates a password for the game right so blah 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 and let's just say i'm some sort of like hacker or whatever and i want to try and see what's actually inside of the script and so let's say whenever i you know print this function i want to actually get what's inside of the function how would i be able to get this function in a text format and this is actually something that is very interesting to me. You see how the script is inside of server script service. What we could do, right, is we could just say print game server script service dot script dot source. And if I say this, look at that. It prints the function, it prints the local password, and then it prints the end. So you can actually print, you can get what's inside of a script as a piece of text and then do anything that you want with that piece of text. And this is very interesting to me because it doesn't even show this as a property in here. Like properties that are usually read only, you know, like properties that you cannot change, like the class name or the unique ID of the script, for example, they still usually show up here, right? Like you'd think that the source of the script should probably show up here just to let people know that this is even a thing. So I guarantee that a lot of people actually don't know that you can do this, but you can. Script.source will return the text that's inside of a script, assuming that you have access to that script. Like for example, if I'm the client and I don't have access to this server script service, then this will just do nothing, right? Script is not a valid member, even though on the server, it actually is a valid member and I can print whatever I want. So I hope that you as the expert player here, because like I said, beginners have no idea that what the print statement even does, right? So I hope that you as the expert have gained a significant amount of knowledge when it comes to the you know deity that is a print statement. I will also say that if you're an expert looking to reach like enlightened level, I will also say that if you are an expert right now, but you want to reach like an enlightening level of Roblox programming, I have a course that's exactly that. Like it literally gets you like enlightened and you start levitating and everything. Like it's amazing. Like every review is great. I've only gotten one bad review, but it's in Spanish, so I don't think anyone really cares about that. And yeah, it's a great course, you know, really recommend it, you know, unbiased review of mine. Uh, so you can go check it out, uh, linked in the description or the pinned comment. And you can also follow my Instagram while you're at it, because I have like really cool like pigeon photos, which I think you might <laughs> like. And so yeah, I hope this kind of made you reconsider the print statement. Um, I know it's obviously really difficult, but to us experts, it's something that's very easy, something that's very, it's something that's often, you know, overlooked. And I do hope that this video kind of made you see it in a more brighter light. And, you know, I hope I put some respect on the print function. Because it is a very helpful function. And I feel like a lot of people kind of forget that, you know. So I do hope, like I said, that your worldview on this function has changed forever. And as always, we are back to basics. Thank you for watching.